Hello, everyone. Can you hear me well? Yes. Thanks. Thanks. Um, so we'll get started. We'll be talking about Linux power management systems, um, how they work, and how they interact with each other. Um, so first, a little bit about myself. Um, I work at Bootlin, so that's the, the penguins here. You might know us, we do um, consulting in the Linux embedded field. Uh, we also do trainings, so just go to bootlin.com if you want to see a, a list of trainings. I don't remember them um, that well. Um, we have a strong focus on open source, uh, so you might recognize our address uh, emails at bootlin.com. Uh, we are pretty active um, on the mailing list. Uh, personally, I do uh, device driver um, development mostly. Uh, so two, two big projects I've worked on, um, suspend uh, two RAM supports for um, a specific TI SOC. So I believe we have TI guys in the room. Um, and also more, more recently, you might have seen my name on upstreaming of mobile eye SOC um, work. Uh, so we are at the stage of um, low level clocks, resets, etc., and that's going into the um, upstream kernel, so it's a nice thing. Um, I do open source uh, contributions, of course, um, also in the Pipewire ecosystem um, from time to time. Uh, current maintainer, uh, after uh, Michael um, left Gutlin, I think he's in the room. Um, hello. Um, of elixir.putlin.com, so I believe that's uh, used by a few people uh, to browse, uh, to browse the, the Linux kernel code. Um, so if you have any issues with that, you can come to me, it's fine. I live in Lyon in France, um, and that's my email, email address if you have any questions. Uh, so um, you might have noticed uh, the, the title of the talk, it was uh, Linux Power Management Features. Um, that's way too wide, and I noticed this afterwards, so um, I'll be coming back, basically. Um, we only be, will be covering system-wide suspend, uh, that is what you do when you close your laptop, for example, and uh, runtime power management features. So those two, and we'll try to see some weird interactions between the two and some um, odd things you might not expect. So keep watching. Uh, we'll start with uh, system-wide uh, suspend. So um, what is it? How does it work? So first step for all of them, there are multiple uh, suspend types. We'll see that later. Um, you always freeze all uh, tasks. So we often think about um, user space processes, but that's not it. Um, we also stop all kernel tasks. Uh, then we go through every um, Linux device and we do four steps. So we prepare them, we suspend them, we lay suspend and no IOQ suspend. We'll see later uh, what that means uh, in detail. And then we go into what we call uh, suspend. So that word is uh, pretty generic. Uh, you will see that it can mean many, many things depending on the platforms. So uh, some advice and some things you want to, to keep in mind if you, you say to yourself, yeah, I want to go into suspend, uh, some questions, so which type of suspend? Those are the, the, the four types. You have suspend to idle, standby, suspend to RAM, and hibernation. We'll see all the, the four types later, uh, so how to pick them. Um, you have the question of the wake-up source. So if you go to, to suspend, it's not to stay in suspend forever, um, I hope. Uh, you want to wake up, um, and so you need to pick what will wake you up. Then there's uh, what you want to do with, with each device. Um, you might want to keep some things active. So for example, if something is a wake-up source, you will not be shutting it down, else it will not wake you up. Um, so you need to, to think about that. And then uh, the main thing um, when picking suspend types is the, the latency goals that you have. So entering suspend can take a bit of time leaving it as well, and that's the most critical part, because you get probably an interrupt that wakes you up, and then you want to do something. Um, that can take some time to, to do something. Um, so you need to think about that. Uh, know your platform and know the suspend types so that you pick the right one. So that's what it looks like on a system. I'm not going to do a demo. Um, that would be risking the odds. So you go into syspower memsleep, you pick the type of suspend that you want. Here we have suspend to idle and deep sleep, also called suspend to RAM. You echo deep into it, that means you, you pick uh, the, the current choice you want, and then you echo mem uh, to uh, start going into suspend. 
And so uh, most often, if you've not done anything about it, you will get some kernel crashes. Um, what will happen will depend on the platform, but it doesn't work out of the box. You need to do things with your devices and with your platform for it to work. Um, small tip, if you want to do that, those are uh, some commands you might want to enter beforehand that will help you in debugging. So uh, you can disable console suspend so that you get your kernel crashes if they happen after your, your usual console suspend. Um, you can raise your print K levels and then some additional things that will tell you what is happening during the suspend. So we get back to what it means to put one device uh, into suspend. Uh, those are all the, the callbacks we are interested in. Uh, you have eight of them, so four of them are for suspend. Um, the rest is uh, for resuming. Um, it's always going to be symmetrical, so I won't be talking too much about resuming because what you do at suspend, you're basically supposed to do the opposite at resume. That's the logic anyway. It might be more complex depending on devices, but that's the kind of things you, you expect. And there's some more I'm not listing here. Um, so I've got some pseudo code here. Um, it tells you how, it get, how it, each device gets called. So you do prepare for every device, then you do suspend for every device, then you do suspend late for every device, and then suspend no IRQ. Um, not to be confused with doing prepare, suspend, suspend late, and suspend no IRQ for each device one after the other. That's really not the same thing. And so now, what do those mean? What does prepare mean? So um, prepare is rather special. Yeah, it works. Yeah. And prepare is rather special. You won't be doing too much um, into it. It mostly allows uh, devices that can have sub-devices uh, to stop registering new children. Uh, that's important because you don't want, um, once that's called, um, the, the kernel is not going to be expecting new devices. And if new devices um, appear after prepare, then there's an issue because it's not going to be suspended. Uh, so it's basically a, a race condition that you want to avoid. That's what prepare is for. Um, so we get into suspend. Um, my description is rather brief. I think you will all agree. Um, I said, please stop doing IO. That's what the doc says. Um, and that's pretty much all we can say about suspend. We don't have much more information about what you are supposed to do inside the suspend callback. Then there's suspend late. So you can see it as please stop now. Um, that's pretty much it as well. You don't have any um, specific asks from the, from the kernel itself on a generic level. And then suspend no IRQ. You really need to stop now. So please do now. Um, you have one additional guarantee that is really useful for uh, many devices. Um, you can be sure that no IRQ handlers are going to be called at, at this step. So even if IRQ come in, uh, your handlers will not be called. So that can be really useful. So you know you have no more IO that is happening. Uh, so you are safe to save state, for example. Um, and so now some more uh, generic advice. All of those suspend callbacks are supposed to do two things. Um, you want to save your device state. Um, that can be pointed. It is, you might want to do it. You might not want to do it if you know your device will not lose its state. But if you know it, it will lose it, uh, you need to save it at some point. Um, the kernel does not tell you when to do it. Um, and no one is going to ask for it. The other thing is to put your device into some specific low power state. Um, so that's really generic. It can be about touching clocks, resets. Uh, you might want to affect pin control. Uh, you might want to do many, many other things um, on the, the, that is hardware specific. So I can't give more instructions at that on a generic level. So you might have understood by now, um, all behavior is really device specific. Um, and it depends on the subsystem you are in. And so um, you cannot know exactly what device state is like. Um, only those callbacks can all return errors. That's pretty much it. If they don't, um, the kernel assumes they are put into what it calls suspend. And that's about it. You don't know much more than that. Um, so some code, uh, some example. Here you have two GPIO controllers. 
Um, so one from Renesas um, and another one for, uh, from Nomadic, a rather old platform that we revived uh, with Mobili. Um, so you can, do the, you can see they, they do their suspend. Uh, one is doing it at suspend no IRQ and the other one is doing it at suspend. Uh, so it works for both of them. It's the same subsystem. And the, the difference is in what you are going to be able to do um, at suspend no IRQ. So um, if you take um, Nomadic, for example, the, so the second one, the one below, um, you will not be able to configure your pins inside the suspend no IRQ uh, callback because it will already be suspended um, and so you won't be able to do anything about it. Uh, you need to keep that in mind and that's just one example of seeing how something is really uh, platform specific and you can't make any assumptions about when you should touch your pins, for example. And so um, you might think now that moving everything as late as possible is the right solution because then it means everything is usable as long as possible so that its uh, dependencies can use it. Uh, that's not the right solution. So um, obviously, if you have something and no IRQ, you will not be able to use IRQs. So maybe you, are, you need them for your suspend. Um, so that will be a, an issue. Um, or the actions that you provide. So if you say are a pin, control, um, pin controller, and uh, your, your select state uh, callback needs interrupts to, to work, um, then there's no point in suspending a no IRQ because you won't be able to do work at that step anyway. And so um, the last point is about remembering that all your dependencies need to ask uh, this question as well. So um, let's see an example straight away. What you see here is a nice square C GPIO expander. So it's from uh, public dev board, I won't be naming uh, people. Uh, that's, uh, so um, what happens is that your GPIO is controlled over I2C. And what you can see, maybe it might be too small on the right, is that you have PCIe uh, root complex resets. So I, as you might guess, that reset GPIO is required to do the, the suspend uh, callback. Um, so the, the PCIe subsystem requires you to do your, your suspend at suspend no IRQ. That's a basic assumption from the PCIe um, subsystem. But at the same time, your GPIO is on, a, on an I2C controller that might already be suspended uh, because it can't be working well at a no IRQ step. So you have a, a conflict here in between the subsystems. The PCIe subsystem expects something that must be done at um, suspend no IRQ, uh, but you depend on something, so one GPIO, that requires IRQs to work. There's a conflict there. Um, so we will switch now to uh, the different modes of suspense. So we have four of them. The first one is suspend to idle. Uh, this one is really nice uh, because it is not dependent on any platform specific code. Uh, by platform, I mean really CPU um, stuff. What you find in Arch, for example. Um, so it piggybacks on uh, the idle loop support, which you must implement for any platform because otherwise your CPU will be running all the time, even when you don't have any process running, that's, that would be weird. Uh, so you just need config suspend. Uh, that's what the code in the kernel looks like. I've abbreviated it uh, because of course, if you don't do anything about it, you can have, um, well, basically it's a critical section, so you need to protect it. Uh, pretty complex stuff. So I've removed most of it uh, just to see what it looks like. So when you want to enter suspend to idle, there's some global uh, S2 idle state that is put to enter. Um, you do some things to other CPUs just to make sure they are in the idle loop, remembering that they are in the idle loop because, um, because there are, there's no tasks to be run. So that's the kind of conflict between wake up all idle CPUs uh, but the command says push all CPUs into the idle loop. That's um, what is meant. Um, they will be woken up. They will be rescheduling, but there will be nothing to reschedule because every task is freezed. And, and, and so then, so that's all the other CPUs, uh, but the one that is running the code. And the one that is running the code then is going to do the same uh, idle loop wait. And is going to wait for this uh, S2 idle state to switch to wake. 
Um, and so it's not shown here, but this, um, this value is set inside interrupt handlers. So if you get an interrupt during suspend to idle, you will be woken up. Um, so next step, um, that's platform provided modes. Uh, so we have two of them, we have standby and suspend RAM. Uh, so those are rather different. Um, so they require platform support. So you might not be, uh, have them available, uh, or you might, it depends on your platform again. Um, the, the platform also can say whether or not it supports any mode. Um, so you can see below, you have a, a struct of uh, suspend or platform suspend operations and I've only kept two. So the valid one is returns a Boolean uh, that says whether this state is available or not. And the enter one is supposed to enter uh, standby or uh, suspend RAM. Um, so again, uh, what is the expected behavior of standby or suspend RAM? Um, no one really knows. I can't tell you exactly what will be done on your CPU uh, because I don't know your platform. Um, uh, suspend to RAM by its name, uh, most people implement it by uh, lowering the, the DDR frequency and putting it in self-refresh. Uh, nothing forces you to do that. You could just lower the frequency if, you're, if you have issues with self-refresh, that's fine. You're not breaking anything. Um, so, as I said, you don't know, so I've listed uh, a few things that could be done or that could not be done, I don't know. Um, so, standby could be implemented using an idle loop, that's possible. Uh, that's often what is being done. Um, you could turn on off the whole SOC, SOC, um, so that's possible as well. Uh, that can be done by some suspend RAM modes. That's the, the kind of the most advanced suspend you can do by turning your stock off and just keeping your DDR in self-refresh that will keep everything here. Um, you could have some CPU caches that are stopped. Uh, that's possible. Um, most platforms do it. Um, you could have some specific clocks that are turned down. Um, so SOC, uh, clocks that are entering the SOC, you could uh, switch to a lower one uh, just to, to save some power. Um, and then you can even have your devices that do different behavior based on uh, which target um, suspend you are, uh, you are going to. So there's a, a global that's called PM suspend target state, so pretty obvious stuff. And you can do if, uh, if that equals suspend RAM, uh, do some specific stuff. So there's something like 20 drivers that do it, uh, so be aware of it. And then one last uh, small trick uh, the regulator subsystem can affect what it does, so it can cut off regulators uh, based on the type of suspend sta state you are uh, aiming for. So you even have um, uh, uh, DT properties for that. Those are called regulator state um, suspend to idle, for example, and those are not uh, documented. So uh, behavior is platform specific. Um, I feel I've repeated it enough. You don't know what will be happening. Uh, so some examples, um, um, I've given here two links. So suspend to RAM is often implemented because you want to put your DDR in self-refresh. You can't be running code off DDR. Uh, so most often you have some other uh, storage, um, often an SRAM that uh, is used. I've given a link here uh, to, to two platforms that do it uh, manually. So you can go and read the code. They copy some code into SRAM and jump to it um, inside the kernel. So pretty fun uh, stuff to read if uh, you don't know what to do this evening. And then PSCI, uh, so that's often used on ARM64. Um, so it's the kind of um, uh, call to, into TFA most often uh, that is uh, about uh, power controls. Um, so the driver does not support standby, it only does suspend RAM. And so, again, I can't tell you what will happen on your platform because it's offloaded to firmware uh, with this uh, specific uh, macro. So go and look at TFA code this time. And I pick again um, AT91. Uh, this one is rather specific. Um, it can do five different modes. Uh, so it, that doesn't map to, uh, to the platform modes, to the standby and suspend RAM that are available to Linux. So it can do five different ones and you can configure it um, 
uh, using, using a module parameter. Um, and so the, the first one is really just wait for interrupt and uh, reduce DRAM power. So I, I believe that's not DDR refresh. I've just read the, the code comments. I'm not sure on what reduced DRAM power means. Um, and the, the up to backup, so that's the, the, the biggest uh, thing you can do. So you turn your sock off, uh, you put your DDR into self-refresh, and you disable as many things as possible. So again, there's going to be a latency involved in waking up back. And so hibernation, I'm going to talk quickly about it. I don't know much, so um, if you do have questions, um, we can talk later, <laughs> I guess, and I'll be reading code for you. Um, the most efficient uh, way, so it's kind of shutting down. Uh, basically, you turn everything off, and then when you wake up, you check if, if actually the last suspend was an hibernation. So, and you save everything to disk, some disk, whatever it is. Um, and when you wake up, you restore state. Uh, you even restore your user space state. Um, so that can be useful. Um, just uh, two small differences. Don't confuse hibernation with shutdown, even though I just said it was the same thing. Um, you can configure some peripherals as wake-up source, so that can be useful. So uh, it's kind of being able to reboot, but picking a different uh, way to, that will wake you, uh, you up rather than just your power button. Um, and it can be useful if your user space, so you, uh, usually you do that only with a massive user space tax that takes um, seconds and seconds uh, to wake up. Um, so just keep in mind this kind of uh, a scale. Um, basically, you always trade something. So you go from low latency where you do nothing, so just running uh, your system. Um, and then once you want to think about saving power, um, you pick one wake up source and then you go into the different modes. So start with suspend to idle because it doesn't re require uh, platform support. And you can go deeper and deeper, uh, but it will take more time to wake up. So here's some random facts about suspend to idle. Um, do you know the expected behavior of your clock monotonic when you go across suspend? So there's three different options. I don't think we'll be doing a poll that would be too complex. Um, either it could continue ticking, uh, it might uh, stop, or uh, it could depend on the suspend state. Maybe you could say, yeah, maybe suspend to idle is supposed to keep your clock running, uh, running and other clocks should not. Um, well, the answer is in the man page. Uh, so this clock, does not count time that the time is suspended, that the, suspend is sus the system is suspended, sorry. So man page tells you um, you must not account uh, for suspend time. Uh, but there's, uh, there's a conflict. Uh, so, so if you want suspend to idle to work, you need your interrupts to be enabled, of course, because that will be uh, your wake up source. Um, interrupt handlers do one assumption, they assume the timekeeping subsystem is running. And that clock monotonic is driven by the same timekeeping subsystem. So there's an issue there, and the kernel will break its promise. So it looks like that. And so there's a small tool on my GitHub uh, that you can use. It's really not much. It just prints all your clocks every second. And then I let you guess on which line the suspend happened. So as you can guess, I slept for something like 30, 42 seconds, which is not much, uh, but still way too much as being declared by my kernel. Um, so uh, that might be surprising to some people that do suspend to idle on, the, on their laptops uh, every day, and that doesn't happen. Yeah, there's a, a catch here, um, because suspend to idle can be, well, entering suspend to idle can be offloaded to your CPU idle device. Um, and on most laptops, we do have a CPU idle device that can enter suspend to idle. And as that can enter suspend to idle without any interest enabled, then you can turn off the timekeeping system, subsystem, and it works. Um, so that's what happens on your laptops and on most platforms. If you do want suspend to idle where clock monotonic is not ticking, um, then you need to get involved into your uh, CPU idle device, which requires hardware support, of course. 
Um, so be aware that uh, code paths inside the kernel can be rather different, different uh, depending on the different uh, modes you are entering. So there's this suspend to idle, suspend to idle with, um, uh, with CPU idle, and then you go into the platform modes um, that have, again, rather different code paths. So again, some reading if you want to go there. Um, the code paths are rather different and have some weird uh, and unexpected differences. But again, most platforms are safe because you have your CPU idle uh, device. Um, so we can switch to runtime power management now. Um, that's what it looks like. That's what we talk about when we talk about runtime PM. Uh, it's two callbacks for each device. One is runtime suspend. So that is called whenever your device is active and enabled, but it is not needed anymore. And the other one is runtime resume. Uh, so that's when uh, your device is suspended, but that you do need it. Um, so you won't be calling those uh, functions directly. You won't be saying, please wake this device up because you don't know its current state. And so you need to remember the, the device model is a tree of devices. Uh, so you need to handle uh, how it works with parents, parent devices. So overall, it's a reference counter that is called usage count. So on the right, I wrote some, some pseudo code. Uh, that's not the kernel code. It's way too simple for it. Um, but that's kind of uh, a good mental model to have when you do PM runtime get or PM runtime put. So one, the get um, is to increment the usage counter. So that's the first step. The second step is to wake your, dev your parent device up. So you can envision something where you have a bus, and so you might want to wake up your bus controller just to make sure that your bus is available. And then if you got woken up, that means your usage count was zero and got up to one, uh, you must resume yourself as well. And once you are done with whatever you were doing, uh, you can reduce your usage counter back uh, minus one, if it got down to zero, that means you can suspend your device. Uh, you are done with it. You don't need it anymore. And then you do the same thing recursively to your parent. Um, so kind of, um, as you guessed, the code is oversimplified. You're not going to get uh, five line functions inside the kernel for this kind of um, behaviors. So let's see a list of everything the runtime PM can do for you that it was not included in the previous code. Um, so first, time, uh, first thing, what happens when you call those functions inside an IRQ? So um, that might be supported. Um, it would not be something I would recommend in the standard case because it can be slow. For, that's the main reason. Uh, but there are other issues. So first thing, you can mark uh, your runtime suspend and resume callbacks as IRQ safe. Uh, that can be a good solution if it is, and you can do that. Uh, you just need to remember that your parents need to do that as well. If you need to wake up your parents, uh, that's important as well. Or otherwise, the call could be done asynchronously. Um, so there's a work queue here. You just put some request, please wake this device up, and it will be done uh, later on. The important part here is async. That means when you get back from this function, the device is still not woken up. So you still cannot use it inside the IRQ. You can just make the call to it. Sorry about that. Recommend drinking water if you want as well. Um, so uh, your devices can be disabled as well. That's the default uh, state. So there's another ref count. It's not just a Boolean. Uh, that would be too simple. Um, so you can disable it, uh, and it's the default state. So when you start using some specific device and you want to use runtime power management, first step is to enable it. Um, also remember that it's rather different from getting your device or suspending it. You do not wake it up or force it uh, to suspend. That's not the same thing. If you disable a device that is enabled, It'll, it is not going to be suspended. It's just not going to have its runtime power management enabled. Some more. 
Um, so uh, you can allow or forbid devices from uh, runtime power management. Uh, that's, that one is a Boolean. Um, it is different from disabling, and I do not know uh, uh, when it is used. I've looked at the kernel code. There's a few places that use it, uh, but it was too obscure for me to understand. Um, then you can ask for some reason to ignore your call box. Um, what does that mean? That means you are not responsible for your own power management. Um, someone else is, your parent is. So your parent device will be responsible for waking you up. Um, I don't have in mind any examples. The idea is that you can have sub-devices that don't, have, don't handle any specific hardware, um, and so you don't have anything to do at wake up. You just trust your parent to do it for you. The last uh, big feature uh, that can be really useful uh, is auto-suspend. So you define a duration for which you don't want your, your device uh, to go to sleep as soon as you reach a usage of zero. Um, so that's really useful for storage devices where you can get accesses every few seconds or every few milliseconds. And um, otherwise you would just turn it off and off and back on again. Um, that can be a slowness reason. So you just, because uh, suspending your device can be slow and resuming it back again. Uh, keep in mind, uh, so those are the functions you can use um, inside your device, but uh, the user space might also play with the duration. So that needs to be kept in mind. It can change over time. Um, and so, uh, so that's the interaction between runtime power management and suspend. Uh, so there's an implicit uh, runtime PM disable that is done. And then uh, the symmetrical thing, it's enabled back up again. Uh, so there's no real specific thing to do in between runtime PM and suspend. Um, when you go to suspend, you might want to force runtime PM off. Uh, so that's a good way of saying, my suspend is the same thing as doing a runtime power management suspend. So if those are the same thing to you, uh, use uh, force suspend and force resume. Otherwise, you might want to implement custom behavior. Um, and so that's one uh, um, commit from a colleague of mine uh, where he had to wake a nice square C controller backup at suspend um, because, because the, the runtime power management was disabled and so it could not um, be used by devices. So I have a graph here, um, a, a schema uh, that looks like that. Uh, so what happens? is that you wake up your I2C controller at suspend because you might want to use it inside suspend no IFU, and then you force it back down. If you don't wake up your device here, uh, it will be, uh, it will be uh, runtime power management suspended, and it will be disabled as well, so devices that do accesses on your I2C controller will not be able to work. Uh, so that's one example of a specific uh, behavior. So summary, behavior is device and platform specific. Uh, if someone tells you something is suspended, uh, well, don't trust them and just uh, ask yourself what exactly is happening on your, on your hardware. Uh, you can face issues uh, whenever subsystems interact with each other because some, like PCI, for example, tell you specific things you need to be uh, doing. Uh, so PCI, you need to be uh, still active at suspend no IRQ and still be able to access registers. Uh, so that might conflict with your GPIO um, reset that is not available anymore. And so make sure you look at code paths that are different from one suspend type to another. Uh, that can uh, catch you up. And I'll be uh, doing another talk like that because we only covered suspend and runtime power management. And there's many more features uh, to be talking about. So GenPD is uh, power domains. Uh, that's one way of grouping devices together uh, to shut them off. Uh, quality of service, uh, wake up sources, and maybe some more if you have, uh, want to see some specific talk about something. And that's it for me. I was a bit late. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free. Thank you. No questions? I guess it was way too clear. 
Yeah, we only have 30 minutes. I, would, um, don't, I wouldn't mind talking uh, an hour and a half about that kind of things. Yeah, one question. Um, so the question is, is there any kind of support for device tree automatic suspend? Uh, I don't see what you could do inside device trees. Um, I guess we, the, the issue currently I see is that we don't model enough what is being suspended. What does suspend mean is a big issue. Uh, we don't know what it means. And no, uh, we don't have anything, any way of saying uh, to a specific device, please do this suspend or this suspend. Uh, that's a good question. I'd, I love talking about it. I have some thoughts, uh, so please come up and we can discuss it together. Yeah? Do you know what happens to the code that runs uh, on ARM in the trust zone when you go to sleep? Um, so the question is, do I know what happens in the ARM trust zone when we go to sleep? Um, I've looked at some uh, TI platform doing suspend to RAM, and the answer is uh, the same thing as from Linux. Uh, you jump to some code in DRAM, uh, you put your DDR in self-refresh, uh, you lower its frequency, and then uh, you shut your SOC off and ask your payment to wake you up. Um, so same thing, just done by someone different because firmers. Well, again, I guess we can go back and eat something now. Um, thank you, everyone.